two currently underway. Let's turn the music and sounds back on. In the top left corner of the map, we have from Root Gaming, the blue Zerg player, Root Hydra. In the bottom right, as the red Protoss, it's your flash of sun. So, I mean, in fairness, the two Zerg players he's losing to are two absolutely fantastic Zerg players. You got Hydra on one side, Solar on the other. What do you think this really says for San, though? Or, you know, he's this guy who everybody knew for the Protoss all-ins. He's the the one who more or less fathered in a lot of the disgusting all-ins that we watch. But he can't seem to make anything work versus either of these two. I, uh, I don't know. See, I, I was never on the hype train for San. He won a lot of tournaments that I just wasn't really personally invested in. Um, you know, on his road to BlizzCon. And then at BlizzCon, he had a pretty bad showing, let's be honest. Uh, so, <clears throat> I never really got the hype, and as such, I'm not really like looking to explain his downfall, other than people just figured it out, finally. <laughs> like, a lot of people finally figured him out. It's like everyone's like, your patch, patch Protoss. Well, no, more like a one-built Protoss. <laughs> One-trick pony. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't any patch that helped him, it was just abusive builds. <laughs> You know, so that's pretty good with his gateways most of the time. We are seeing it slip up a little bit for this series. But that last game was also probably the weakest we've seen him so far. And I don't know if maybe it's the toll of time spent playing or what this like at the venue. If it's super busy, maybe he's a bit stressed out or what True. the case is. I think that there are some, you know, there's mental blocks in everything in StarCraft. Versus compositions, versus players, versus races, versus maps. And I gotta imagine versus builds like the gold base. So people just aren't very good against it, you know. Their initial instinct is to all in. Especially someone like San, that's probably true. It doesn't work like five times in a row, and you're like, well, what does work? I'll try macroing. Okay, that doesn't work either. So, San might just have a hiccup right there for that. So, in StarCraft 2, is a mental block literally a force field? And is it? Psionic is it units. Released? Yeah, psionic. It blocks everything. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. So you didn't wow. answer the question, though, is that yes or no? Yes. I figured you kind of answered the question yourself. It wasn't quite rhetorical. It was close, though. It was almost, it was almost oh, rhetorical. Okay. okay. My bad. Well, I guess the Overlord gets a pretty decent scout, but sadly there's nothing to scout. Uh, if you saw the second gas, that'd be pro Actually, you did see the second gas. Okay, so you notice it's not just one gas for the opening in. You know, whether you realize it's the Stargate or not, the nice thing is unlike poor, poor Terran, who tend to come into this matchup with no anti-air if they're unprepared for it, you know, Queens at the very least will perform that bare minimum to make sure that the Oracles don't get too wildly out of control. Yeah, yeah. Really, the worst thing that can happen to, uh, with not seeing the Stargate is that the Queen is out of position in a big way. Like, she's on the other side of the hatchery where the Oracle comes in. Then suddenly 10 kills can't happen. But as long as she's in position and starts attacking immediately, like the most you ever get is probably like five or six. And if it is scout and you have a spore crawler, you could get zero <laughs> and just use your perforation, which isn't necessarily bad, but it's not, you know, it's not the best it could be. That was like the saddest probe, too. Comes in, he's like, I'm at home, I'm safe. Oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> it's like the one probe that ever dies, too, because most of them do get oh. back home alive. So I know Sans done this out in the past, right? He went for the Oracle into All In. Not gonna do that here. Alright, he gets both gases. Okay, so another macro game from him. Third base, easy enough to take on Koda, I would say. But it's just more about, you know, the player that you just faced, Hydra, right? Just didn't tear you apart, really. But I got the, the feeling that Son is a little uncomfortable, you know? Like, tech swaps are your worst enemy against Zerg, but with Protoss and Terran, maybe more so for Protoss. And if you're not sure what's happening, you're kind of guessing, you're kind of hoping you'll, you'll guess correctly, you're going to feel boxed in. And if they keep denying your fourth, you actually are boxed in. And I'm just afraid the same thing will happen on this map, in this you know, same, same macro game. Well, it's funny, because you, you talk about guessing, and it did definitely feel like what the case was with those Storms and Templar. I mean, San did get good use out of them. And towards the end, it actually looked like he was taking a couple of fights that might have gone his way, thanks to them. But I don't know as good as good as storms are, they're never as good as a Colossus shot because the Colossus shot reloads much faster. Yeah, yeah, it certainly does. Uh, well, this Oracle is getting good scouting. Hopefully, they get a better scout than the last game. Because of course, that last game not only started off with a gold base, but a couple of like roaches, like five. 
managed to kill, you know, four centuries and a handful of zealots, so. Yeah. It's already starting off a little bit better, and he's, you know, able to scout that no roaches are in the way. Lings are, but as long as you have decent positioning, you know, the, the sentries are near a mineral line, they shouldn't be able to kill the sentries. How sick would that be if, like, so right now, if you want to see what a, what unit's building of a Stargate, you just look at the Stargate and it shows you, right? You can clearly see the outline yeah. of the void, right? What if for eggs they had, like, different color patterns for, like, different units? Oh. That'd be kind of neat. Like different camouflage colors, like that red and black one. I always loved red and black camouflage, but I was never sure in what situation would red and black fit in. Uh, bad guy's dungeon. Oh, okay. So like a James Bond video game, right? Probably where I first saw it. Sure. Maybe on like Star- in StarCraft it would work on like Char, right? Like a volcano, like volcano environment. That's true. Yeah, I figured it out. That's why it exists. Uh, we have the same things kind of happening here. Uh, without the, the back and forth or the, the cool gold base, but still, you know, the Spire, Hydralis Den, probably gonna go up to Hive versus Storm and a couple of Void Rays. I... Hmm. I mean, the storm, again, yeah, I, I just want to stress, like, it, it, it doesn't do the best damage because roaches have a lot of health. It can destroy Hydralis, it can wreck Lings, it can kill Infestitarians, but pretty much any unit outside of what we described is either too mobile, too fast, or has too much health to really care if they get stormed, I guess. So it's, it still is a weird choice, but, I mean, we saw good use of it last game, so I'm not going to question it just yet. No. Well, we have 10 mutas again. I think if he dedicated to Mutas, he'd be, he'd be able to do pretty well. Even with a Stargate opener, one Stargate isn't a ton. It really isn't, and you can definitely like depower that as your first act as a Zerg Overlord. But it looks like he is going to just use them as kind of the fake slash War Prism cleanup slash, you know, general annoying units and go back into Roach Hydra. Yeah, general annoying units sounds about right. <laughs> A nuisance, a pest, a pesky problem. There you go. It's a couple of, uh, it's a couple of fruits. Got to couple of loose to me the mutas, though. Very little to no focus fire actually lets all of them get out alive, pretty much. That was a bit of a mistake out of Sun's part. There's at least two could have executed almost for sure. But uh, the Hydra swap coming up, it's it's not a lot required, but pretty much most air does get shut down by Hydra. It's not because of the range, but just that attack speed is so nuts. Although, as funny as it is, Queen's actually a better counter to Void Rays than most other units, like, just period. Yeah, definitely true. Well, Muta's still ducking around. They're not only being annoying, they're also getting kind of a lay of the land type of thing. You know, where are your bases, where are your proxy pylons, what does your army look like, and what are the upgrades as well? I'm sure he's clicking on all the units. Well, it's going to be hard to put proxy pylons down. Uh, Hydra already has a pretty nice amount of creep spread out, mm -hmm. so... I mean, there's little spots you can put them up here and in between, sure, and you wouldn't be able to see them. But for the most part, I really like this creep spread. It's not too dedicated. He doesn't have a huge queen count on the front line spreading it, but it's enough that it's getting around the outskirts of the map. And if nothing else, it blocks the proxy pilots from being built close to your base. So the proxy yeah. is no longer so proxy. But Saw needs something to break out of that box that we were, you know, talking about in the beginning. And last game was a war prism that didn't do it, unfortunately. It tried, but it just didn't quite work out. And, uh, well, even though that didn't work out, it is still, like, an option, a, a hope and prayer that it will work and will get you out of the box. And I think he has to do it again. Uh, but big attack on the way here. Lots of storm energy again. Tons. That first one kind of whips. Yeah, not that good. Again, trying to get on top of this as quick as huh? he can. Focus is on the Mothership Core. Hydra should be able to pick this off. Walks right by or it. Or ignore it, because he's merciful. No, because he's tunnel visioning on the Templar. He does actually pick off the Templar, which is yeah. kind of nice, but still a little bit awkward. Phoenix is starting to lift up some of the hydrogen on the backside, and the Roach count, I don't know if it's going to be big enough to carry through versus the reinforcements, but it uh, looks like he does break San's front line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, upgrade just finished for Hydra, so now he has an upgrade lead. If he had that at the very beginning of the fight, who knows this would have looked like, but... It still looks pretty good, as Hydra is, of course, able to remax a lot quicker than San. And San not only has to wait for the High Templars to warp in and whatnot, he has to wait for them to gain energy. No Cardarian Amulet for you. Oh, God. You just made so many Protoss players well up in tears. They remember the Fallen upgrade. 
but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a little unfortunate that's the case. Now, we do have this uh, Oracle heading back towards the main. Sadly, if it was a Warp Prism, it'd be really devastating, but it's not. This poor crawler should be able to shut this down. For Hydra, well, he did break San's front line. He did give away a lot of units for it. However, it looks like he's been able to remax a little more comfortably than that of his opponent did. You know, whether he's picking off the Zealots here or diving in for the Templar there. Either way, he's got to be careful with the way he's giving these Roaches up. Big warp in two of new zealots on the front line. Storm skipping down on the backside too. But Hydra still just has so many units behind this. I mean, it's good as Storm is, it still just can't quite deal with the flood most of the time. However, Hydra is eating a lot of this. Zealot wall, however, does finally get broken. San's got about 800 minerals. He can still invest in another chunk of zealots if he wants to. But Storm on top of his own Archon gets that killed. Last couple temple I go down, and this is probably possibly one of the last reinforcement waves coming in. Yeah. Just getting absolutely crushed, and now the second upgrade is going to finish putting oh, San in a, a or uh, Hydra in a pretty big lead. That's it. GG. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Hydra going to take his group in second place with a 2-0 finish.